Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm very excited to show you this game from the 2023 World Tournament. This is my third game, and I'll pause for a moment in case anybody has not seen the first two games. But I won those two games. So, because of the format of the tournament, I'm guaranteed to make it to next round, and so this is a very low-stress match. I obviously still want to win because if I do well, I may get a buy in the first round of the single elimination phase. But overall, I'm guaranteed at this point to make it to the single elimination phase. So I asked my opponent if they wanted to use any action tokens. We decided we would use two and we randomly rolled that I would be free people. So this is just a fun game. There are some really cool things that happen, and I hope you enjoy it. Let's jump right in. My opponent is Fionnar. Okay, so uh, let's see the rolls. They allocate one eye, and then I get this amazing roll. So this is just, right, like what what more can you ask for? And I love Celeborn's Caladrim as an early card. I also have Challenge of the King, which, you know, I may not always play, but it can be fun if you manage to get a red eye out of the pool. Shadow God King is revealed in Nazgul Strike. So um, I think I just go for it. So they, I pass, they draw a strategy card, and then I bring everybody except Gandalf and the two hobbits into Moria. So I separate Strider, Legolas, Gimli, and Boromir. And I'm going to be able to crown Aragorn turn one without giving my opponent any rings. So that's pretty awesome. And they don't even get Saruman. So they only got one muster. All right. So they move some armies around in Mordor and Farharad to Nirharad. I send Legolas to Lorien, Gimli towards the Dew Line, and Boromir and Strider down towards Minas Tirith. They shuffle some armies around, heading toward, um, I don't know exactly what this army is going to do, Gorgoroth to Morinon. They can either come towards Gondor or they can go up towards Dew. And it looks like they're making an attack towards Lorien with this Dol Guldur army. All right, I move companions again. Gimli gets a little closer to Erebor Woodland Realm. So if at some point I draw um, something like the Book of Mazarbul, then I can get the dwarves straight to war, but otherwise I can use Gimli's ability to move into Erebor and get the dwarves to war that way too, over time. Okay, and then they muster Isengard toward war, and they save their last Palantir because they know that I'm going to be getting Aragorn, and therefore they can play King is Revealed turn one. <laughs> so it's fairly unlikely that uh, Shadow gets to play that turn one, but that's pretty fun. All right, and then they play King is Revealed, so perfectly nice. Maybe they're going to attack Gondor. All right. Uh, so I'm happy to be rolling five dice to their seven. Uh, they draw Shelob's Lair, Shadows, Lengthens. Good cards. I get Faramir's Rangers. Wow, that's a great card. Very happy to see that, especially because it looks like they're coming towards Gondor. I get a perfectly nice roll. And they allocate uh, one eye and then roll zero more. And at this point, I want to ideally... Well, I was going to say that I wanted to move the Fellowship quickly to kill off Gandalf and, and be able to uh, bring him back, but they actually don't have Saruman. So maybe I'll use an action token to get some tempo, but we'll see. Okay, so they draw another strategy card. I move the Fellowship and it's safe. They play Shelob's Lair. I move the Fellowship again, safe again. They draw a character card now. Okay. I'm not sure exactly what um, their plan is, but could be nice to have some options. They draw Orc Patrol, which can be good. And now I temporize. So I guess I'm waiting to see if they get Saruman. I'm not sure why. You know, upon reflection, I feel like maybe that was overly aggressive and I could have saved my token. Um it will let me, especially because I have Boromir there, so I can like use any die at all to muster Gondor towards war. Um, but I guess maybe I'm thinking I'm going to get Gondor towards war, actually to war, and then start mustering in Gondor like crazy and get Gandalf next turn, I guess. 
All right, so they play Monsters Roused. I don't often see that played, but with the Fellowship still in Rivendell, maybe it's nice to attack up there. And now I do get Gondor towards war, and I guess I was thinking, well, they can get Saruman or they can get Gandalf, and I'm taking the last action of the turn. So this way, what? I'm going to use a ring to move again and try and kill off Gandalf? I guess we'll see. All right, so they move armies. I No, I just muster in Gondor. Yeah, so I, I don't know why I needed to spend that muster, that muster token right now. Was it that urgent? So they get Saruman, but Gandalf's not dead. So I now that Saruman's in play, I'm definitely going to move a third time, try and kill off Gandalf, and then hopefully roll a Will of the West next round. All right, so they do get a they do hit me. They get a six uh, and um, get, get an eye. So I'm revealed. I'm assuming I'm going into Moria. I'm probably taking Gandalf to this, to this one in case the Moria tile is any of these two zeros or these three eyes. Okay, interesting. So I took a random, I took a random companion here. That's fun. I forgot about that. I took a random companion thinking if I lose Gandalf, okay. Uh, and if I don't lose Gandalf, I'll probably still be able to kill him next turn on the way out of Moria. Um, and this way, if I get fear, fire foes or something like that, I can, I can do something cool with Mary. Um, and I wouldn't be heartbroken if I lose Gandalf. So cool. All right. So Mary goes and ends up towards Buckland and that, or no, Evendim. So now if I draw either Fear Fire Foes or Book of Mazarbal, I will be able to get the appropriate nation to war. So that's cool. And then the fellowship reveals into Moria and then I draw a one. Okay. So now do I kill off Gandalf? to a one i think i probably do because that way the nice thing about the nice thing about killing off gandalf this way not not that i mean i would have preferred a three but um if i do this now the two or the one or the one will not reveal me out of moria because i will separate this hobbit and then Gollum will be guide and then these won't be reveals so that's kind of cool so i'm guessing i lose gandalf here yeah okay so gandalf see you later and hopefully i'll roll the will of west next round all right, Power of Tom Bombadil, Guahir, okay, nothing particularly special. Ooh, and they got Corsairs. But I do have Gondor at war, and they are pretty low on musters, so they're definitely hurting for musters. All right, they allocate an eye roll, two more, and oh, look at this beautiful roll. All right, now I will say, no, it's just a great roll. I mean, because Legolas is in... Uh, Lorian, I can use these uh, character dice as musters, which is definitely a significant benefit of getting the companions out. Not only do they help protect your strongholds, I mean, they, they also give you these really flexible options with dice rolls in, in the early game um, and even fairly deep into the game, depending on who's where. Okay, so I start by thinking, <laughs> okay, I start by hiding the fellowship. Fair enough. And then they play Orc Patrol here, which obviously is a great card. And they get a three. Not not what I wanted to see. I take two Corruption and um, Pippin is separated. But at least uh, now the only way I'm getting revealed out of Moria is if they draw an eye tile. So I go ahead and move now. And they do hit me. And there's the zero. So, you know, obviously I'd rather not get hit. But at least Gollum's doing his job. And um, what do they do? They thought about using a Palantir, but then didn't. And now they are moving their armies into position. Looks like a standard attack on the elves. I get Gandalf and Fangorn because that way um, I don't I don't need him over in in Grey Havens to to do fear fire foes if and when I draw it because I have um, I have Mary over there. Okay, they have Nazgul Strike. Obviously, that is great. Oh, wow, and they also had Isildur's Bane. So Nazgul Strike seems great. Um, they have five dice on a five. No, oh, look at that. They have six dice. So they get all three rerolls in Moria. That's really fun. Um, one hit, okay, one hit, and they get the eye. So not great for the Fellowship. Definitely wanted to avoid that eye because otherwise I'm not revealed. Um, but that's how it goes sometimes. So... I'm revealed in Dimrald Dale, and I take one corruption, and then they get two more. So now I'm up to five corruption. Obviously, that is not what I want. 
Um, but I do have six dice going for me and a lot of companions on the map. So I anticipate my plan at this point is to go into Lorien and heal up a bunch, just sit there for six turns or five turns, however long, and then uh, use the intervening time to do military shenanigans. So that's what I'm guessing. And because I have Celeborns and I have um, Legolas here, I'm guessing that I'm feeling relatively safe in Lorien. I'm assuming that's my plan. All right, so now I start because I, I see that uh, I'm going to need Lorien to hold out. I'm starting to get the Elves to War, and it looks like they are coming towards me. So, um, all right, so I use Legolas's ability, and then they get Sauron to War, and I get Elves one away from War, so I should be able to muster, certainly into Woodland Realm, um, before this army hits, which is nice. Um, they move that army along. And now I have six dice to their eight. That certainly feels great. Ooh, King's Brand, King Brandsman. What a great, what a great roll. What a great um, card with um, this army heading north. All right. So what do I get rid of? I guess we'll see. Um, Power of Tom Bombadil and Gua here makes sense. And they allocate one. I roll one more, and then I get just very flexible, nice roll. So because of Legolas, I can just get the elves to war and then start mustering up. So I get the elves to war with the Palantir, anticipating that I want to hide once with the Fellowship, move once, um, and then the rest of these can be basically musters. I have two, two musters with the Will of the West and the um, Hybrid Die, and then this Palantir can be either Celeborns or King Brandsman. All right, so elves are at war now. They attack into Lorien right away, which is interesting. It does stop me from mustering up in Lorien, but it costs them sort of two extra actions because that's not going to be enough for them to be able to take out Lorien. Um, they leave behind one regular, and then I start mustering into Woodland Realm. Okay. They get the Witch King. I hide the Fellowship. They move the Witch King and get their army from Moria towards Dimrald Dale. So they're prepared to um, get Lorien um, full. And then, I'm remembering this now, I play a card. What card do I play? Do I play King Brandsman or any other card? The answer is, I play Celeborn's Galadrim. I have no idea what I was thinking. Uh, I just don't know. Like, there's no way Lorien is getting attacked right away. Clearly, this army in Northern Ravanian is either going for Woodland Realm or Erebor. And um, they could easily attack Dale. So I didn't really expect the attack into Dale because it does put the North two towards war. But why not play why not, why not play King Brandsman first? I just, I don't know what I was thinking. So anyway, I play Celeborns. I get, I get the card draw. I mean, that's not bad. Um, and then they attack Dale and I'm like, why in the world did I not play King Brandsman? So, okay. So they cycle Warn of Sorrow and Toil. Uh, obviously not effective at this point. They get their hit and I don't get any. So I feel, I feel sad. And um, why why did King Brandsman not get played? All right, sometimes you make mistakes. That's part of the game. All right, so I go ahead and reinforce Wooden Realm a little bit more. And now they are looking around. They're like, well, I guess, um, interesting. They're thinking uh, they move armies. All right, so they're moving towards Umbar. And I'm thinking now I better make sure Dol Amroth gets mustered up before the South Rounds and Easterlings are at war. And then I move once, right? Because I want to get um, myself into Lorien and the chances of getting revealed here. I mean, they do get to roll four dice on the hunt, but there are only two eyes that reveal me everything else. I'm fine. So, um, they do hit me, um, but they don't reveal me. So I'm up to six corruption. There have been quite a few tiles pulled, uh, but now at least I can sit for a while and just let the fellowship heal up into in Lorien. I'm not worried about Lorien getting taken with this army, um, with Legolas in there and three elites. I'm, I'm fine. So, um, but my opponent attacks Erebor. So, you know, I had, I had built up Woodland Realm so nicely, but now, um, Erebor is getting besieged and I don't have Dane and it's sad. Okay. And why, again, why did I, 
like it was just not the priority to do Celeborns. Obviously, I want to play Celeborns at some point, but I just didn't need to play it right then. Okay, so they get Erebor under siege, and they're going to bring in this army from East Rune at some point and take out Erebor, and that seems like a good situation. Okay, um, they're happy to see Cruel Weather, I'm sure, and uh, I get Spirit of Mordor, Elven Cloaks. Um, also, just noting, House of Stewards, often you do not get to play it, but um, I have Boromir in a Gondor region, so that's pretty awesome. You know, if there's a turn where coming up where I'm sitting in Lorien, I don't really want to use my character dice to move because I just want to heal up. That's a perfect use of House of Stewards that just fuels fuels the military campaign with two strategy cards and an elite using a character die. So if you are going a military route, that is um, great. Okay, I discard Kindred of Glorfindel and Scouts. Interesting choice, but hard hard to know. And now I start to heal up in Lorien. All right, they roll four eyes, and that's exactly the sort of thing you want to see when you're going for this military strategy. I don't know that I can capitalize on Dol Guldur right away, um, but... Okay, I get a very flexible roll. Let's see what I do. So I start by playing Faramir's Rangers. I'm just mustering up in Gondor. I play House of the Stewards, right, because I need to use up my cards to use them efficiently. I get more Gondor units, Help Unlooked For, and Riders of Theoden. They're passing, by the way. <laughs> um, they merge up in Lorien, and I get the North to War. Okay, not exactly sure why that's a priority, but okay. Um... I mean, at some point I want them at war. They relocate, they give up on Erebor temporarily, relocating to Lorien. Um, I get elite in Carrick. Okay, so I guess I'm thinking this Carrick army plus this Woodland Realm army can go and do something, either Dual Golder or Mount Gundabad or who knows what. Um, they attack into Lorien. I mean, this is tough. I have seven hit points to their nine hit points. And I have a companion in there and I have a handful of cards. By the way, I didn't mention this, but I did actually save Elven Cloaks with the idea that I could use it as a combat effect because if they attack in Lorien, I have the fellowship there. You do not often get to use the it is a gift uh, combat effect, but I can do it here. And it's quite powerful when you get to use it. Um, tends to be a little better when you're attacking um, if you're in Moria or something like that, but it's not bad on defense also. Um, I don't know. I'm assuming the Witch King has Balrog. Let's see. No, I guess we'll see. May okay, maybe they're using Dread and Despair to try and minimize. All right, I end up playing King Brand's men here, um, saving the Elven Cloaks because I anticipated Dread and Despair. All right. Or Balrog. I don't know. I don't know. That's that's an interesting call. But Okay, so uh, they get one hit. I get one hit. And um, they stop. So I guess they're just cycling character cards. I get another elite in Carrick. They muster towards war with Corsairs. And now, am I really not worried about... Um, they mustered the South Rounds and Easterlings. Am I not worried about Corsairs? I mean, I'm not mustering at all in Dol Amroth. My force pool is that I have one more elite. Maybe my thinking is... Hey, go right ahead. Move this army from Umbar to Dol Amroth, and then I'll just march in and take it and get a military victory because you're not going to be able to get to 10 before I get to 4, and this giant army in Minas Tirith and Osgiliath is going to absolutely take Umbar if you leave. So I'm like, go ahead. All right, that's fair. Uh, and then I muster up a regular... In okay, I, was, I just said mu mustered a regular in Dol Amroth. I guess my thinking is I have one more elite. I'll get that in there before they before they crash in. Um, and then Carrick gets a regular. All right, so now I'm starting to have a significant number of hit points up in the north here. All right, they're up to nine dice now. Um, I get rid of Swords of Ariador, Swords and Ariador, and they get rid of Palantir Vorthank, okay. Uh, and I'm just healing, right? This is my plan. I'm just mustering up. I have plenty of useful things to do with my dice and letting the Fellowship heal. All right. Um, they roll one more eye, still no musters. So they are having a lot of trouble getting the South Rounds and Easterlings toward war. And I will say one of the benefits of that first turn where I got Aragorn 
crown, but without using any rings. They have not, they do not have any rings. And when you're rolling six dice as free people, often you have enough flexibility the, to, to, to do what you want to do without having to spend rings. I mean, obviously the more dice you roll, the more flexibility you'll have, but um, it's sort of an indirect benefit of not having to spend rings. Uh, okay, so again, get a beautiful roll. I mean, that's just, look at this roll. It's just amazing. Um, all right, so they're moving from Dale into Erebor, which to me, I mean, with no, no musters, like there are so many things that are at risk from like Dol Golder is pretty open. Uh, Mordor is a little open. I don't know that I would be moving my army from Dale to Erebor. That's risky. And they have no musters. I mean, we know that they do have um, orcs multiplying again because they showed that and um they do they do have pits of mordor so i guess they're they're just not feeling that risky but honestly five elites i mean five regulars against against this sort of an army or this sort of an army uh is not enough okay i pass to see what they do they move uh nazgul around again giving up on lorien going towards erebor and now i muster another elite in Karak. And they attack into Erebor. Obviously, I don't want them to dish out too much damage. I want this army to to live. Um, we'll see what happens. They get two hits. I get none. That's sad. At least I want to try and whittle them down. They play uh, Deadly Strife Corsairs. Interesting. So they're absolutely giving up on Corsairs, which I think is the right call, given the board situation. Um, and they get two hits only. So at least my... Uh, Dwarves hold out for one extra round, and I get three hits back. So that's great. Dwarves manage to at least dish out some damage back. I did spend a pretty good card. I spent um, Riders of Theoden, but it's worth it to stall them and to whittle that army down. I don't want this army in Erebor being so powerful that they can just go march on Woodland Realm right afterwards. Um, all right, so I get a Gondor. What am I doing? Okay, I'm moving. So I'm moving... Uh, not towards Mordor, but I move my whole um, Minas Tirith army and Osgiliath army. So Faramir, Boromir, Aragorn. Look at this army. Five, five leadership, 11 hit points, four elites. That's, that's a beautiful army. Uh, and I'm moving them north. So I guess I'm coming towards Dol Guldur. Um, Man, if I had through a day and a night, I mean, that would be, that would be a problem for shadow um and what did i yeah so i just merged that army okay they draw a strategy card i move armies again i'm going towards Eastumnet. it's not clear if i'm heading towards moria or dol Guldur. and then gimli merges up in old forest road so that's interesting i wonder i wonder if instead like why it do I don't know where these armies are going yet and maybe shadow doesn't either. And maybe that's a good thing, but maybe the reality is go for Mount Gundabad, go for Dol Guldur because those inevitably are the weakest. And even if they have all of the mustering cards, this is plenty big. Like this, this army in Eastam net can easily, not easily, but I mean, yeah, pretty easily take out a, a five hit point army in a stronghold. I have mighty attack. I have no quarter. Um, sudden strike if I need it. So I think that this army in Woodland Realm should actually be moving towards Mount Gundabad. All right. So be it. They play Pay to Mordor. Okay. Oh, what? What? They only had three regulars. Oh my gosh. I don't think I realized that during the game. I think, I think when they did that is exactly when I just realized what happened. Um, which makes me think I shouldn't have killed so many units in Erebor. They, they had, they had no regulars. Wow. So they still have no regulars and they have no musters. Holy cow. So, yeah. So knowing that, do I just, even if they have those mustering cards, they can't use them effectively. 
<laughs> Look at the text. I just said, whoa, I didn't realize that. So my past Ira self and my current Ira self were both surprised at the exact same moment in this game. It's been a little while since I played it. I like giving a little bit of space between when I play it and when I do the video because it gives me a, a fresh chance to, <laughs> to enjoy what happens. Ah, okay. So be it. Um, didn't realize that. And... Um, all right, so I move. Whoa, Gimli, what are you doing, buddy? You're not going the right direction. That's sad. So Gimli is going towards Dol Guldur, and Aragorn is going towards Moria to free up Lorien. That's a little sad. I, I don't think this is the right way of doing it. I think Gimli needed to go to Mount Gundabad with the Woodland Realm army. All right. They, what do they do? They move a big army into Dimrald Dale. And now I attack Dol Golder. Okay. And then they attack in Erebor because they want to kill off another regular so they can put more into, into Dol Golder. I wonder if, yeah. All right. So they don't play a card. They do kill me off. And I didn't kill any regulars. So they have six regulars sitting up in Erebor, which they don't actually want. Um, and then I attacked old Golder. I think I'm going to play mighty attack. Yeah. Mighty attack. Do I get a six? No six. They get a hit back. And now I press, I get one hit. Way to go. Gimli. Wow. Gimli did everything. Gimli literally did everything that battle. He did a mighty attack and then he got the hit on the, on the reroll. Gimli way to go, buddy. All right, so Dol Golder is now captured with what I would say is a pretty sizable army. Um, that seems pretty hard to retake. And I have this giant army in Parth Celebron. But imagine if Aragorn were there instead, and then I had a giant army up in Mount Gundabad. So, okay. Um, they play New Powers Rising. And um, this is exactly what my game plan was. Let the Fellowship heal up. I still want to keep my ring chances alive, but at the moment I'm making some pretty good military um, options. Uh, and they just have been low on musters. So that's how it goes. All right. They obviously don't allocate any eyes. They roll three, but at least they get some musters. And I only got two attacks. Okay, but obviously would want more. I muster into Minas Tirith because what else am I going to be doing um, with that muster? I need to make sure that my strongholds don't fall too easily as my armies go out and roam around Middle-earth. All right, they muster into North Dunland. And I really want... Um, what I really want is... Three a day and a night, but I don't have it. Okay. I play help on look for. That's cool. So I'm moving into Lorien. That's kind of fun. And uh, I take out that orc and I get to merge up this army. So now I have a one regular in Parth Celebron and I have this giant army in Lorien. And I got to effectively move that army, merge it up with a Palantir. That was cool. Don't often, don't often see that. Completely outnumbered anyway. Um, that that orc was, <laughs> was like, why do you guys leave me here? Ah. <laughs> And then, and then Aragorn, Faramir, and Boromir show up with a gigantic Gondorian army. It's like, hey, do you guys need anything? Like, it's like, no, we're fine. We got him. We're like, we'll take him. And they, they annihilate. Him. <laughs> we saved you, Legolas. It's like, Legolas, I was fine. It's fine, guys. It's one orc. All right. Um, anyway, so what, what the heck is going on? They, they move Nazgul around. Is that what just happened? Um... Yeah, move Nazgul around. So be it. Um, all right, so I drew a character card. And I definitely want to attack this army in Dimrald Dale with the, with the Witch King, but I also um, don't want to use a character die to do it because I'm still hoping to take out Moria this turn, I guess. Um, I'm going to move Gandalf in, right? That has to happen, I think. Horde from the East, okay. And then I play We Prove the Swifter, fine, to move Gandalf. All right, so Gandalf is now in Lorien. I have a mega army. Frodo is like, this is the best party ever, guys. Uh, I don't know why he didn't, he doesn't have to talk in such a high voice, but Frodo is, Frodo is happy, right? Like, um, yeah, it's just everybody is having a great time in Lorien. 
life is good for the fellowship. Um, all right. So we tack into, uh, into Dimmerel Dale, obviously. Um, all right. So what do you play here? Right. I have, I have Bilbo's song, which would be a very pleasant way of, uh, killing the witch King. Um, I could also play like sudden strike with challenge the King. Cause I do have plenty of leadership there. I have eight leadership in that army seven once Gandalf shines. So would you play Bilbo song or you play challenge the King or fateful or, or, um, path of Wizards? you know, I looked at the math and I think my chances of getting, of taking out the witch King, like getting seven hits was similar to the chances of getting two hits on a leader reroll. And I think Bilbo song is a more valuable card in the long run because I might still have a ring game at some point. Um, so they play words of power and I play fateful strike. Okay. Um, yeah, obviously it would be nice to kill the witch king right here. Uh, I get no hits on my attack. Very unlikely. Very sad. And I was happy actually when I saw all those first five miss because that meant my chances of getting hits on the, on the leader reroll were higher, but zero hits is a set. Um, they get to two back uh but actually it's only one oh what gandalf shines oh words of power right 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 words of power okay so um i continue the attack and press and now i'm like man this army didn't do any damage to this army my army did not do any damage to their army and now like i can't i can't win i can't take out moria so um they move a giant army into moria and uh, prepare the Southrons and Easterlings, who might someday get to war, uh, to the Vale of Karnan. And, and now I guess maybe I'm happy that I left this army in Woodland Realm. Um, but the thing is, they were so, so far behind on victory points. Even if they walked into Woodland Realm, it probably would be fine. I'm still getting to four before they get to ten. Um, all right. And now I move, I move my um, army now out of Woodland Realm into Old Forest Road. Because I anticipate that they're going to try and recapture Dol Guldur. I'm going to send Gandalf and Aragorn up to uh, take out Mount Gundabad. And I'm going to send these elites down to Dol Guldur to recapture it. But had I had I just sent Gandalf or Aragorn towards Dol Guldur in the first place and Gimli to Mount Gundabad in the first place with these armies from Woodland Realm, I, I, it already would be done, I think. Um so I'm giving Shadow a whole extra round to react. Um, all right. So I move my armies, move my armies. Okay. They allocate, I continue to heal the fellowship. I, they allocate zero eyes roll one and I get only two attacks. So this is really sad because if I had more attacks, I would be able to take out Mount Gundabad and also get Gandalf and, and companions into Dol Guldur. But as it is, I need to move, move, and then use a ring to attack Mount Gundabad and hope, perhaps reasonably, that these five elites hold out with Gimli, um, which is pretty darn good to have five elites, but uh, it would be even better if Gandalf were there, especially because I've been saving, or not been saving, but I've been looking for Heroic Death. So Heroic Death is incredibly powerful uh, defensive resource. And also Gandalf shuts off various Nazgul cards. Anyway, uh, so I move armies and they're not even bothering to defend Mount Gundabad at all. They're moving their armies to try and recapture Dol Guldur. And I draw a strategy card. Why? I don't know. I finally got through a day and a night, by the way. I don't think that made a difference because um, I needed to move the, the elves into Dol Guldur anyway. So I just, I think I just saved it. Um, all right. So I drew a strategy card. I don't know exactly why. I guess I just had so many Palantirs. What else was I going to do? Uh, okay. They're moving armies around. I get into Mount Gundabad. Uh, they get the South Rounds and Easterlings towards war. Finally, I go ahead and attack into Mount Gundabad. I'm not bothering to play cards. I'm saving them all for this epic battle in Dol Guldur. And um, I just get two sixes right away. And they do one hit. 
Okay, who cares? So I have this way overkill army in Mount Gundabad. Um, and now it's all about it's all about Gimli and Dol Guldur. So uh, Shadow attacks into um, Dol Guldur. I don't stay out. And maybe it would have been better to have a field battle first, trying to dish out some damage to this army. Um, but I think five elites and Gimli are probably going to hold. So they start by attacking once. And because they have um, Shadow Lengthens, they're going to be able to get this army in Dol Guldur down pretty low and then reinforce with this giant new stack from Northern Rovanian and, um, and then attack again. So, you know, obviously 10 hit points with a companion is great. Um, and it can almost certainly hold against 12 hit points, but I don't know that it can hold against 13, uh, 23 hit points if we count everything in Northern Rovanian and Dol Guldur. So let's see what happens. Um, they start with a character card. I play uh, Sudden Strike just to start whittling them down. And uh, I get one on my pre. And then they get three hits right off the bat, just rolling three sixes. And um, I get two back. So not what I love to see, but sometimes that's how it goes. They press and uh, play another character card. And I play Daylight because I guess what else? I'm not sure what they're going to play. Um, and I have plenty of cards to burn. Uh, so they get two more sixes, which is obviously not ideal. And I get zero back. So they are adjusting their casualties, I guess, in some way. And then I have to, I have to take this. So what's sad here is if I had Gandalf there and some other uh, companions, first of all, they would have had fewer rerolls, many fewer rerolls. Uh, and second of all, um, I might be able to make a counterattack here, which is obviously not something you would normally want to do, but because I can easily see that they're planning on reinforcing with this army from Northern Rovanian, it might it might, you know, let me win the game uh, immediately. Because if I hold Dol Golder, I win. Um, okay, so I draw a strategy card. I'm definitely feeling a little hopeless uh, now because they were able to do five, uh, so many hits. Okay, Shadow Lengthens as expected. And I draw another card and... They attacked Old Golder. I'm obviously going to try and hold out. I do have Gimli with Heroic Death, which is five hit points, but probably not enough against this powerful of an army. Start with Shield Wall. And um, they get two hits. I get two back. They press. Um... Why did, did I actually, did I just lose two? Oh, they got three hits. Oh, right. Cause they played cruel as death. So they actually got three hits and, um, so I only took two and now, and now I'm not playing a card because I'm just, I'm giving up on Dol Golder. They managed to retake it. And so I'm saving my resources because there is another way is incredibly powerful, both as heroic death and as, um, the card effect, if I want to move the fellowship at some point. So Gimli goes, good try Gimli, 10, 10 hit points was not enough to withstand that much. Um, so well played by Shadow to recapture that. Had I been a turn sooner and sent Gimli up to Mount Gundabad in the first place um, and Aragorn to Dol Guldur, I wouldn't have been in this situation. Um, okay, so we go on to next round, the game continues, and um, I am now healed down to one corruption only and maybe i'm starting to move with the fellowship now maybe not with a roll like that maybe not uh i start mustering up again uh okay brie and minas tirith they're attacking iron hills yeah did i have dwarves to muster yeah so maybe i could have mustered in iron hills um 
I didn't think that unit would matter much. So, okay. Um, continuing to muster in Minas Tirith and Bree. And then they move an army towards Lorien. I don't think I have any. Okay, I have one elite. Interesting. Um, why did I not want to muster the elite into Lorien? Not sure. Mustered a regular in Lorien and a regular in Minas Tirith. They attack into Woodland Realm. Okay. And I play, ah, right, because I was saving, I was saving that elite for Woodland Realm so that that can potentially hold against these six regulars. Maybe, possible. Um, they play Ulag High, now less possible. All right, they're moving Nazgul around, they're attacking into Woodland Realm, they have Great Host, and... See you later, Woodland Realm. So Woodland Realm goes and falls. And this is obviously the risk of a military strategy. If you end up emptying out all of your own strongholds, then um, Shadow can take them pretty easily. Uh, still, they're only at five victory points. So this army of Mount Gundabad can certainly cause some trouble. They play Return of the Witch King and come to Angmar. So what, what should my plan be at this point? Do I want to start moving? Um, I attack into Mount Graham. So what is this army of Mount Gundabad going to do? Why am I going towards Mount Graham? Um, I wonder. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess the issue is Rivendell is quite weak is the issue. I, can't, I have literally no more elves in the force pool. So... I'm just going to, I'm coming around to defend Rivendell and maybe give up on Mount Gundabad. I'm shifting from a military victory strategy to a, to maybe I'm getting going with the ring next round. I guess we'll see. So, uh, they do one hit to me. I leave one regular in Mount Graham in Mount Gundabad and they muster into Angmar. I muster an elite into Bree and now they're moving their army from Woodland Realm over to retake Mount Gundabad, I guess. Uh, I get rid of Wizard Staff and some Ents. And uh, now the Fellowship has healed from six corruption down to zero. They get three eyes and I get my character movement. So I'm ready to go with the Fellowship. Let's see what happens. Um, all right. I start by getting a regular in Bree and a regular in Carrick, just to slow them down slightly. They attack into Carrick. I play scouts and go, oh, that's interesting. And I go to Old Forest Road. And now I'm going to cause shenanigans. I go into Dale. That's pretty great. And now I do still have some more um, northern units to muster, but I didn't roll any musters. Uh, enough musters this round. So I'm definitely causing trouble in Dale, but it's probably not going to be a major issue. Um, they have to sort of shore up Erebor. I'm wasting some actions for them. And then I get moving with the Fellowship and I'm safe. And Dale gets attacked. That is now done and Dew is now completely uh, subdued. I move again. They hit me and one corruption. So that's fine. Um, Army is moving now toward Lorien from Dol Guldur and coming up to Gondor from Umbar the hard way. And now Gandalf is, what's what's he doing? What's that army doing? Gandalf into Etmores. Okay. The ring is mine gets played. And now I'm attacking into Trollshaws. See a later troll. We do not like trolls around here. And I guess I was going for Moria. The issue with this strategy is Mount Gundabad is very weak. So if I, I'm not really threatening military at this point because they can come from Angmar and retake Mount Gundabad. But I guess I'm trying to move the fellowship. So, all right, um, round 11. Uh, they, 
Oh, they did not allocate any eyes. They were supposed... Oh, no, they did. Sorry, I missed that. They do allocate an eye and then um, roll two more and I get a very nice flexible roll. Continuing to move... What? Thinking, thinking, moving armies. Okay, so I uh, move some armies around and my opponent attacks into... Um, I've gotten to bad. So... I worked hard to take it, and then now they're just going to recapture it. Um, I guess I'm going after Moria, but what does that really do? They muster an elite into Moria, and I move the fellowship. Um, fellowship is safe. Moving Nazgul around. I move the fellowship for a second time. This time they get hit. And they get revealed. So that was relatively unlikely to get revealed, but not impossible. Obviously, it would have been preferable um, to go from Lorien to Minas Tirith or to not get revealed here, but so be it. Um, to Corruption and uh, into Eastern Emin Wheel. And these are the moments where maybe I should have saved Bilbo Song, right? Like I have theirs another way, uh, but... It's going to be a tough, tough Mordor climb. All right. Shadows on the Misty Mountain. I hide. Uh, Mount Graham is definitely getting, I mean, uh, Mount Gundabad is definitely getting retaken. And uh, I muster into uh, Dol Amroth. I'm, I'm definitely using my force pools pretty effectively. I have one Gondor <laughs> regular left. Uh, no elves. Um all right, so Mount Gundabad falls, and uh, we go on to next round. I get rid of Guards of the Citadel, because don't really need that. Horn of Gondor, interesting. I don't know exactly why I get rid of that, but... All right, um, my opponent rolls two more eyes, and uh, this is an interesting situation. I would really like to get into Mordor, Um so I guess we'll see what happens. I start by moving. Um, they hit me right away and uh, I'm not revealed, but I choose to reveal myself to save the corruption. Okay. They muster into uh, Orthanc. Uh, I put Mithril Coat and Sting out because, yeah, Nozzle Ghoul Strike is already played and draw an end card. Orcs multiplying again gets played. I hide the fellowship. And yeah, so I brought this army to Holland, but I didn't actually defend Rivendell. So now there's this giant army coming from Mount Graham to deal with Rivendell if I don't come and defend it. All right, I have a power too great in play. Why bother playing that? I don't know. What else can I play? Maybe I keep drawing cards. Et Moors gets attacked. Uh, and I do no damage back. That was certainly a waste of an elite. And I use a ring to move. And I'm safe. I'm safe on that move into Mordor. So I'm definitely feeling some rush. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a tough climb. But... Maybe I can do it. All right, Falcon gets played, and it's a zero. So, you know, nice for Shadow to remove that from the hunt pool. This is not a particularly pleasant hunt pool. Um, and we go on to uh, round 13. So allocate one eye and roll zero more, which obviously I would like to see. And um, this hunt pool is full of red tiles. And I get a nice roll here. Um, not quite enough army movement to get to Rivendell. That's, that's a bit of an issue. So I start by playing there's another way because if I'm moving a few more times this turn and I hit some eyes, this, this die does not go into the pool when you, uh, into the hunt box when you play there's another way. So that is a benefit because then it does not make later eyes, uh, m worse. Um, so I heal one, I move and, um, I get Shelob's Lair. So not what I want to see, 
maybe I just take it. I mean, I'm going to run into some reds along the way, but I think, I think I redraw it. I don't know. Do you keep Shelob here? It's, I mean, definitely don't want a red, but all right. Um, so I redraw with Mithril and draw into the one stop reveal, which obviously is always sad when you redraw a red into a red. Um, but that hump pool was bad. That I mean, you gotta you gotta be prepared for that. So this is this is gonna be an un unlikely climb. All right, they play Lure of the Ring. I'm up to five corruption, and um, my opponent moves towards Rivendell. I have not successfully defended it with this giant army. What is this giant army doing in Holland? I guess it's kind of protecting Lorien. Um, there is power too great. So they forgot about that. I guess I was hoping that they couldn't get rid of it. That's how I was planning on defending it. But um, all right. So they get rid of, or they play Morgul Wound. Okay. That seems good. I guess I should have hidden. Uh, I play Aomer. They draw a character card. It makes me think they don't have, I guess they just didn't have a character card they wanted to um, discard to power to great. That's what's happening. Um, I'm going, I'm mustering Rohan up. They attack into Pilar gear. Okay. And I muster Rohan down again. They get the mouth. I attack Moria. Why am I attacking Moria here? I guess the issue is this army in Holland can't defend everywhere. Um, all right. They go into Siege. They get rid of Power Too Great. And I attack into Dimroll Dale. So I've defended Lorien with this army, but I have not defended uh, I've not defended Rivendell. Okay. Um I dish out a good amount of damage. I leave some some army um on Moria just to slow them down a little. Okay, I guess my army in Dimroll Dale is going to come retake Erebor or Dew or something. I mean, they're only at six victory points right now, so they need probably two more strongholds. Uh, they could potentially take Dol Amroth, um, but then it might be tricky to hold Pilar gear, so I guess we'll see. Um, they allocate one eye, roll one more, and um, I get a pretty flexible roll. It's nice. And I, oh, right. And last round, I guess it was a little sad that last round I only moved once, um, even though I there was only one eye in the pool. So I wonder, could I have, like, why did I need to attack into Mori and Dimroldale? Why didn't I hide and move? I don't know. All right. So a uh, fourth red tile goes in. I at least get the file of Galadriel and they attack into Rivendell. Um... Rivendell goes down pretty fast. See you later, Rivendell. They're at eight victory points now. And I move Gandalf to Fangorn. What's going on? No. Okay, I move Gandalf to Helm's Deep. Mary to the Shire. <laughs> Mary's like, guys. <laughs> Let me tell you this story. <laughs> I've been waiting in Evendim for so long for a book or Fear Fire Foes. But now I'm just showing up back home. Nothing's going on. Nothing's going on. Um, <laughs> it's a really great trip, everyone, is what I said when I was playing the game. Apparently my past self and my current self are in sync. Um, all right. So Boromir ends up in Fangorn. Uh, Strider ends up in... Uh, East of Net. I guess I'm going to draw Dead Men of Dunharrow at some point. Have I played that yet? I don't remember. Uh, and Legolas, Legolas stays with the army in Dimmerald Dale. Okay. Uh, why did I do all that? I guess I needed to defend. The issue is I need to defend Helm's Deep because if my opponent attacks into Fords of Eisen, I would really like to be able to muster with with that at that moment and get another elite into Helm's Deep. And then I want to be able to play end cards. 
All right, so that's why I did that one. I did my opponent sorties out of Moria, uh, and then I play Elven Rope. They move uh, leadership. Uh, looks like they're reinforcing their um, army in West Herondor. And then I get an eye here, which is two. I don't love that. Um, but because of the Vial of Galadriel, Vial of Galadriel, I, I do have some hope now. Like, it's theoretically possible if I hit this negative two, then, like, and the eyes are relatively low, like, I could I could manage to do it. So they attack into us Gileath, uh, cycling another character card, and I muster my last regular into um, Minas Tirith, and they get uh, another unit in Moria. All right, moving on. I get scouts now, very useful for the Fords of Aizen. They allocate one, I roll zero, which is definitely what I want to see at this point. I'm hoping my military is going to hold out, and I just need to move um, Smeagol along. I play, I'm moving Gandalf with this. Interesting. So I'm hoping that they somehow got rid of Day Without Dawn earlier or discarded it. They've been very patiently holding it like a really long time. And now this is the moment where I've rolled three wills of the West. I can only use one. And so they're going to manage to get rid of two wills of the West. And I, I guess I think, you know what? It's highest priority to get Gandalf uh, into Minas Tirith so that this uh, stronghold holds. Obviously it would be better if I could, if I had saved like Wahir or somehow, I don't know. Um, all right. So Gandalf is now, uh, in Minas Tirith, and I have Aragorn in Helm's Deep. They do play Day Without Dawn. Obviously, that is quite bad for me. I draw uh, into Dead Men of Dunharrow, which I'm happy to see. Fords of Isen gets attacked. Oh, right, and I don't even have any musters, right? So this is, I didn't, I didn't have any musters at this point, and so they've timed it very well. All right, I retreat into Fords of Aizen. I mean, I retreat into Helm's Deep. Is this army big enough, good enough to hold? Maybe. I do have some end cards. Uh, they leave four hit points, and then I just pass, right? I'm not playing an end here because it's not going to kill Saruman, and I'm not spending a ring to muster because that's not the way to go. They play Rage of the Dunlendings. Definitely don't like to see that. Fords of Aizen is now full of a big army, and they're going to take out the Shire. It's sad. Um, and so now they're just going to take, they're going to take um, Edoras, and they're going to take the Shire. And um, even though I have Dead Men of Dunharrow, I, I can't, I can't retake it because, I mean, if I do take it, they will... Um, I do have one Gondor regular, so I, I will be able to reclaim it, but then they can attack back from Osgiliath. So um, losing those two dice from the from the Day of Dawn is tough, but I'm in a pretty tough situation anyway. If I still somehow had a token, and I don't even remember when I spent my um, card draw token, but if I somehow had a token, um, I could have used it to guarantee the last action with Dead Men of Dunharrow such that the four cities option does not, they can't win with four cities if I have a token and I go last, um, which would give me a whole another round for for maybe to get lucky. Um, you know, obviously this didn't work out in, in Mordor very well um, and it was a very tough hunt pool. All right, so they play Black Captain Commands, they take out Edoras, um, and... I don't really have any tricks left. I say, not sure I have any tricks left. Um, I go ahead and move Gandalf to uh, Lasarnach because, I don't know. It's it, The game is lost, but who knows what can happen. Um, they go ahead and take the Shire. See you later, Mary. It wasn't so nice when you got back home. And now I attack Pelargir with Gandalf. Uh, they get a hit. And now they're attacking with this big army from Western Rondor into Pilar Gear. I don't see how I can hold it, but maybe I will. Um, I play Confusion. They cancel it. And they get two hits right off the bat. Uh, 
Oh, no, they don't get any because, oh, that's nice, because Gandalf was shining. Uh, I get three hits, and they continue the battle. Um, I play Sudden Strike, getting no hits pre, and then they get four hits on the Deadly Strife. I get four hits back, and uh, we don't have any cards to play. Nobody gets any hits. And then they get a hit, and that's it. So Gandalf tried his best, but it was not enough. But honestly, even if I had somehow held that, it wouldn't have really mattered because um, the Fellowship can't destroy the ring probably next round, and they can just come retake it. So um, that was the game. It was uh, it was a good one, and I, I definitely had some very real military options. And even after the military failed, I, um, I had some, uh, some chances for, for, um, destroying the ring. And if you imagine, I still had Bilbo's song and was it six corruption here? Uh, there, there are certainly some, some possibilities. I think I still had Athalos left in the deck. Um, yeah, I still had Athalos and Smeagol helps nice master. So I did still have two more cards that could have helped me and they have, they have breaking and just breaking. So um, really great game. Really enjoyed it. It's fun to get to go all out military from the beginning, but still keep the ring game alive a little bit. Um, healing six in Lorien was pretty interesting. And and I think I misplayed, you know, I think I misplayed with, with that Gimli, where Gimli went. Um, and I did have the one turn when Shadow was coming to retake Dol Guldur, where I had five elites in Dol Guldur and Gimli, the fact that I didn't have um, the necessary, like, one more attack, um, and I could have stacked Dol Guldur with a whole bunch of companions, and that might have given a, a better chance. It would have certainly given a better chance of holding out. Um, all right, so let's view the statistics. Um, a lot of dice rolled. Um these are flipped. These are flipped. So um, I was I was minus six on combat dice. I mean, you don't usually see a game where free people rolls 141 combat dice. That just does not happen. And Shadow rolled so many dice. Um, you can see uh, what what about this? Uh, they were up a little bit on on armies, um, on attacks, but then low on musters. And so that did hurt them in the early game for sure. I didn't quite manage to capitalize on it, but, um, that certainly slowed them down. I was high on wills, very good early game. Uh, not good that last round when they got to nab two wills of the West. Um, but great game, really enjoyed it. Um, and either way, I'm on to the uh, single elimination phase. And so stand, stand by, look at, keep, keep a lookout for more videos from that. Have a great rest of the day.